Freud, 27 year old. Laughable or lovable? Hello and welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today, you and I are going to explore Laphroaig 27 year old. This is a whiskey that I purchased, I believe, last year or the year before for Christmas. I think it was last year. And I wanted something special. Um, in fact, it was two years ago. I wanted something special because I had the family around here um, at my house and I wanted to be able to share it with as, as many and much of my family as I could. Um, so I was looking between certain whiskies and I kind of wanted something along this age, above 25. I was originally looking at Ardbeg 24, uh, but the price was £420. This went on flash sale and was £375, which is a ludicrous amount of money for a whiskey. But I wanted something to celebrate with. We just pretty much, it was our first Christmas in our new house. And I don't know why I'm justifying myself, but I feel like I need to justify myself because it's a crazy amount to spend on a whiskey. It comes beautifully presented, as you'd hope. Uh, we're spending that money. It's a wooden box. Um, it's got everything on the front, so you've even got a latch on the side. It opens up, a little magnet kind of holder, and it pulls out like that. So, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely presentation. Um, but obviously, we're not here to really talk about presentation, we're here to talk about the whiskey. I'm assuming that's where some of the money probably went, was this box. I don't know if it's handcrafted or not, but it looks like it's a pricey box. As you can see, I've had quite a lot of this whiskey. I have shared it out with as much people as I can. Uh, I think I've sent a few samples over Instagram as well to kind of get it out there. Because it's a, probably a whiskey a lot of people aren't going to try, especially at this price range. Maybe we'll get it in some festivals or some kind of old and rare type gigs or some pubs, but it's still going to be quite expensive for a dram. So I thought I'd try and share it out. Distilled October 1998, uh, sorry, 1988 to November 1989 and bottled in 2017. So this was distilled six years before I was even born, which is insane. And it has been matured in... Um, Refill quarter, a refill hogshead, first fill bourbon casks or ex bourbon casks, and then refill um, quarter casks. Like I said, twenty seven year old, three hundred seventy five pound. I got it for on a flash sale, and I think it RRP is between four hundred and five hundred or four fifty five hundred. So it is a pricey jam, um, but obviously it's not about the price; it's about the whiskey itself. It's cask strength. I'm sure it's bottled at cask strength. And it's down to 41.7%. Uh, I can't see anything about chill filtration or added colouring. But I mean that is pretty low. It could be chill filtered. I'm not, I'm not entirely certain. But I can't see anything regarding the, the colouring or the chill filtration. I'd assume it's not been coloured. It's not very dark or anything like that. There's nothing fancy going on with the colour really. So we'll get down to it. The nose... I will say one thing, you can tell this is a an older whiskey. There's something, it's got a bit of an almost luxurious feel about it. There's a gentle breeze of um, sea air with also some seaweed there. And the best way I could probably describe this is it's like walking around the uh, rocky kind of shore. The rocky kind of shore round by Laphroaig Distillery. Um, or like at any beach or anything like that. But because it's Laphroaig, I'll say Laphroaig Distillery. It's like what being at the beach is Nyla. You've got a kind of, the subtle peat. If you've ever been to Nyla, the peat's always in the air. You can just smell it everywhere. There's a kind of subtle peat aroma in the air. And also if you're by the beach, there's that sea salt coming in. There may be seaweed on the beach. So it kind of reminds me of being back at Isla. There's subtle iodine um, scents as well which I think are a characteristic of Laphroaig, but uh, I'm not a big, mm, I don't know too much about Laphroaig. This is my first bottle of Laphroaig. 
which was probably a daft idea. I mean, I've had a few of the frogs at the distillery and they're all right, um, but I've never really purchased a bottle of frog other than this. I know people go daft for it, so. Yeah, there's iodine, tropical, tropical fruits. There's a little banana with like a, a chocolate kind of hot sauce over it. Basically just banana and chocolate. But I'm trying to be a bit descriptive because I feel like this deserves a little bit more. And the peat is there. Like I said, it's subtle. It's almost like an afterthought on the uh, the nose. Maybe a little bit of smoke, but yeah, the, the peat's kind of like an afterthought. The palate... It's a really almost tame and relaxed palate. The flavours, there's a lot going on, but they're quite subtle. Um, I wouldn't say they're kind of hard hitting. There's a honey glazed hammond, glazed hammond? A honey glazed gammon um, taste. There's like a kind of almost like chocolate limes, the hard boiled candy with the chocolate in, in the middle. There's like a lime flavour. Um, I feel like the lime or the citrus is quite strong. There's some more banana, um, but now the bananas are uh, more of a cooked instead of just a, a raw banana. It's actually cooked banana. There's a, a barbecue-like um, flavour. However, it's more the end of a barbecue. So for descriptive purposes, why don't we say that the honey glazed gammon has been cooked on the barbecue with slices of lime or wedges of lime and we're tucking into that right now and the barbecue has sizzled out. There's that barbecue, the aftermath of a barbecue basically. Once again, the peat is there, but it's an after, it's not in your face. There's nothing grabbing about the peat. Um, alongside the barbecue, you've got some smoke. Which was what was surprising to me with this was not a lot of um, oak or wood influence that I tend to pick up in older whiskies or possibly older whiskies that haven't been matured very well. So the oak's quite balanced. Um, it's not dominating any other flavours. There's a little bitterness, but it's not overly bitter. Um, like I said, there's a salt from the, the kind of gammon uh, aspect of it. It's not too bitter, not too salty, not too savoury. Um, I think it's got a good balance of kind of banana sweetness, honey sweetness, and the salty side of things. Um, sweet and salty. I think this is very well balanced. I think they've done a good job of maturing it. Uh, so I don't know what the diff why you'd mature it and refill hogsheads to begin with, then first fill ex bourbon and then refill quarter. Um, there must be some sort of obviously science or reasoning in the madness uh, to give it maybe just to balance it out a bit better. But I think it's a very well balanced and complex whiskey. The finish, the finish is the most disappointing part of this whiskey. It's a lot shorter than I expected. It's still medium in length. There's more smokiness, um, iodine, peat. They're all still there. There's also... There's also some ash. It's quite a drying um, end to the whiskey. Uh, you do want like a drink of water or you do want more whiskey. So it's quite... Um, Moorish in a sense, but yeah, it's quite drying. Like I said, with the iodine, the peat, there's something that's almost confirming that this, in the finish, is an Isla whiskey or a Lafroy whiskey. Um, not necessarily in the palate and the the nose. You could probably from nosing it, tell that it's peated and possibly from Isla. But I feel like the finish is where you, um, it's probably because the the nose and the palate all come together in the finish, and you can just say yeah, this is an Isla whiskey. Um. But this is definitely a whiskey win. 
Um, I wouldn't pay £375 for it again. Uh, I'd love to pick it up for 200 250 uh, still that's a lot of money but I think to me it's worth 200 250 I think 375 I think even on the top higher end where they're actually trying to get the RRP uh, 450 or whatever it's ludicrous it's a lot of money for what this is it's a 27 year old whiskey there's nothing although it's lovely and although it's luxurious and I think it's a great whiskey there's nothing that's that special about it other than the box to pay that price a whiskey win if you get a chance to try it, definitely do try it. Um, I do think it's great. I'm not going to say it's a sh whiskey. Um, I've never sworn the channel before, so I might just bleep that out. But I've never. I wouldn't say it's a terrible whiskey. I think it's fantastic, and I would urge you to try it if you can. But don't pay. Um, don't pay a ludicrous price. So I've been Stuart. Uh, this has been Whiskey Whims. Thanks, and I'll. Uh, I'll see you later.